Hey, hello, good day. I'm Jason. Today I'm going to share with you on the topic of how to choose a house with the best floor plan. Okay, all this which I'm going to share is based on my experience of going to several hundred of houses in Singapore. These houses include condominium, HDB and even lender house. And of course, I have gotten many feedback from clients who have bought their house through me. And of course, as a personal uh, homeowner, I also have uh, my own preferred style. Okay, but anyway, the main intention of today's video is to help you to find a house that you can stay in it for a long time with your family comfortably and happily. Okay, the next point I want to go through is actually the size. Okay, the size is important because we never know uh, what is going to happen to us in the future. Uh, first thing, we talk about the number of rooms. Okay, the number of rooms will get you ready for future expansion if you require to do so. Okay, for example, a young couple goes in, they think that the two bedder is sufficient, but in actual fact, they need to understand that they may have kids in the future and two bedder could be too small. So they might just want to look into a three bedder instead. And having do that is actually a wise thing because let's say in the future, like let's say five years down the road, they might feel that the place is small and they might want to shift and shifting is not an easy task for them. The next area regard the, to do with the number of rooms is actually the work from home needs. Okay, because nowadays we talk about work from home. So it would be a bonus if you can have another additional study room rather than to work inside your bedroom. You don't want to bring work into your bedroom, right? Okay, the next thing about size you need to consider is actually the void space. Okay, void space would work in this way. Let's say for example, you have a high ceiling of 6 meters in your living room and your living room happens to be 400 square feet. But for this unit with a double volume living room, the living room is considered 400 times 2, which is 800 square feet. So, in fact, if you look at the house, you don't really have 800 square feet worth of living room, unless you can build a, a loft deck on top of your living room. But there's a limitation for you to build this kind of loft deck. Based on BCA requirement, the maximum size you can go to is only 5 square meter, which is very, very small. It's definitely not less, it's definitely not 400, anywhere near to 400 square feet. But you need to pay for all this airspace. And the other thing about size is that if you look at the layout that states 1009 or even 2000 square feet penthouse, then this is where you need to be very careful because they will actually uh, factor in the roof terrace, the bay window, the balcony, and for penthouse, there is actually a stairwell. So this stairwell area is taken up and considered into part of the square feet. And some of the ground floor area, you have a patio. So all this area which I mentioned, it may not be a 100% usable space. Take for example the roof terrace. The roof terrace, let's say for example condominium in Casamera or Costa del Sol, they have a very big uh, roof terrace. You can't really build a shelter over it and use it like an indoor space because there's a limitation from the MCST that you cannot build a permanent structure. So you can only put a, like a, maybe a makeshift umbrella. A makeshift umbrella means that it's not permanent and rain can blow in any time and it, it can just topple based on if there's a strong wind that comes across. So a roof terrace could be a wasted space to some and this roof terrace could be as big as 800 to 500 square feet in size. So you have to take note. So if you buy a 2000 square feet penthouse, it could only end up to be like 1005 or even 1002 square feet indoor living space. And the next area I want to talk about is the bay window. The bay window design is actually something that most people might think that is a waste of space because for bay window you can't hack it away once you hack it away it will be outside your house you look outside the house so there's no way you can hack it away what you can do is that you can build a platform over it as a table or you can customize your bed to make use of the bay window so that you can lay your mattress over the bay window 